My name is Philip Einger, and I'm a professor. I'm actually the chair of the Department of Geology. And the course we're talking about is Introduction to Physical Geology, Geology 110. So the course is an understanding of how the Earth actually works, how it was formed, and how it evolves, and what's happening today that makes all this exciting geologic activity going on. And the objective is probably um, bigger scale than just understanding the Earth itself. Geology is, means the study of the Earth, but really my objectives for the students in the class, the learning objectives, is, to, is for those students to come away with a sense of how science works. That science is about observing things and trusting your observations and getting a sense of how patterns occur in nature and how those patterns come together to make a coherent story that explain clearly how things work. And so geology is just our little angle to get the students to come and, and see how these different observations work. So observations are made, we kind of make ideas, it's like a little game. Science is nothing more than, a, than like a video game. And we're trying to have the students come away with a confidence. I see how these rules are made. They're simple rules, we talked about today how the simple things in physics just man little differences in density is what makes all the earthquakes happen dense things sink buoyant things rise that's why there's wind in the atmosphere that's why there's currents in the ocean that's why there's movement of plates in the big solid earth and that which is what leads to the origin of the continental crust versus the oceanic crust and these are things these are big picture things that are very simple to understand with a few simple pieces of understanding of, of physics and chemistry. So I, I actually do bring in chemistry. We talk about how why the elements come together and bond, and we do it on a very basic level, but it's a level that I think every citizen should understand. Why do elements come together to make things? There's a reason why they do it. It's a simple thing and we go over that in our geology class because it's understanding chemical variations that were the observations that led geologists to understand how the earth works. So the lecture is, I, I, the lecture is really a lecture. So there's, I, I try to do a little student engagement, but I probably could do a lot better at that. Um, I do what I can. But there's a lot of material to cover in, in explaining what an atom is and how atoms come together. And, um, and so there's, there's three hours of lecture and two hours of lab. And the three hours of lecture, we just kind of march through um, the origin of the planet and the different aspects of geology. And then the lab part of it is a big part of this class. The lab, I think, is a very special part. It's not I, I kind of get a sense that if, if we just had the lecture, you might as well just watch Science Channel. You might as well watch a NOVA, and another NOVA, and another NOVA. And I'm flattering myself to pretend like my lectures are as good as any kind of NOVA. So why don't we just watch the lectures? Because of the lab part. You know, it's what the lab does in conjunction with the lectures. So the lab is about hands-on, touching this rock, this is the continental crust. This is how we make the surface of the Earth. And, you, and the students get an understanding of exactly, oh, it's made up of minerals. Is it a huge mash of a whole bunch of different minerals? No, it's just two minerals. There's two minerals here that make up this whole rock, that make up this whole volcano, that makes up this whole continent. And that's, that understanding is something that you you can hear, but unless you actually touch it and do it and play with it, it doesn't sink. So the lab part of it, the tangible, physical part of seeing and doing and interacting and engaging, it's not just the students engaging with the materials, but it's me engaging with the students and the students engaging with me. That lab time really is powerful for 
from connecting with the students and making sure they're, they're where they need to be as we move forward. So the lab part of it is a really critical part. Science is, is an understanding of nature. How does nature work? And nature is something that they can learn. They can, with, a, with, with a few simple principles, they can get it, that it's not a big black box. We drive our cars, for most of us, that engine is a big black box. But no, when you really open up the hood and you look in, there's a few simple critical parts to it, and we can understand it. All of us can understand it. And when we talk about, when we talk about picking up this crazy little phone and talking to my daughter in France, I can use this phone in a second. I can talk to her through very simple scientific principles that smart people were able to link this, plus this, plus this to make it all come together. I mean, there's a lot behind this, obviously, but every one of us in my class, every student in my class has the ability to make contributions that make something like this work. Science is not something for NASA. It's something for all of us. And nature is accessible to all of us. And that's what I want to convey to my students. That's the main learning objective.